Okay, I want to give you a clear example of the people that say they believe in Jesus. I want to give you an example of who is saved and who is not. The haves and the have-nots. The wheat and the tares, right? Okay, so um, there are a lot of examples to give, but this is a great one here. Let's go do this here. All right, so here in Matthew 7, Jesus says, uh, let's start right here, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name? have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Okay, so you've got uh, these people that say they believe in Jesus. They teach in the name of Jesus, they cast out devils in the name of Jesus, and in the name of Jesus they do many wonderful works. And that word works is key, because then Jesus says, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work in equity. This is very clear that these people that say they believe in Jesus are depending on their teaching in the name of Jesus and that they're casting out devils in the name of Jesus and doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus. Now, these things are not sins. There's nothing wrong with teaching in the name of Jesus, casting out in the, in the name of Jesus and doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus. We're, this is uh, taught to us. You know, all throughout the Bible, uh, you know, it, in, in particular in the New Testament, right? Th this is not a sin. It's not wrong to do these things. It's not an indication that you're not saved. <clears throat> the problem is, these people are trusting in what they do to save them. Right, is that clear enough? They're not trusting in the work that Jesus has already done for us. They're trusting in the work that they are doing now for Jesus and effectively making everything Jesus did of no effect. And that's why Jesus is very adamant and very strong in his words when he says, Depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work in equity. Okay, that should be very clear. Um, you know, again, I think I pointed out not that long ago, ago in, uh, I think it's Ephesians 2. I don't remember nothing. Let's see uh, if I can find it. Right there it is. For by grace are you saved through faith. And pay attention to this. And that not of yourselves. This is not a one-time verse or one-time verse. Uh, saying that you're not saved of yourselves. I mean, this is all throughout the Bible. And in particular, uh, when you know, everything that Jesus did was so that you could have eternal life. He's done all the work. All you have to do is believe in him. And if you think that's what he did was not enough, then you can't be saved. You're just like those people in Matthew 7, trusting in your work, that what you do. Okay, and uh, let's see, there was another verse, I think, that I wanted to point out too. Okay, I think it's in First uh, John chapter 5, I think. I don't know, I can't remember nothing. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't 
I can't find nothing. Can't remember nothing. There it is. No, that's not it. No, I don't remember. Hold on a second. Oh, I, I clicked the wrong deal. Okay, there it is. Okay, so of course, um, uh, 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, and there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the Water, and the Blood, and these three agree in one. All right, so if you continue reading, as you should, you see in verse 10, He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, because he believes not the record that God gave of his Son. And the record is that he died on the cross and resurrected from the dead. So his death was to cover all sins, not just yours, but for the sins of the whole world. All right, so this um, is a complete contradiction to those that say that after you've believed and you sin, that that sin is not covered. It makes Jesus a liar. And there's a lot of people teaching that and saying that after you believe, you can't sin. Of course, there's, you know, all kinds of Bibles, uh, verses uh, that uh, refute that as well. I mean, it's like these guys knew that there was going to be a whole bunch of people not trusting in Jesus and trying to uh, come at you from every angle and getting you to not trust what Jesus has already done and to say that you have to do something, right? All right, so uh, what is that? Is, uh, what was that? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened to have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world come, if they should fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. So it's impossible. It's impossible. So if what you're believing, if you believe that if you sin after you become saved, then you lose your salvation, then it's impossible for you to be... Um, to be uh, to have that sin covered for you, um, it's not possible to be renewed again after if you believe you've lost your salvation. It's impossible to be renewed again. So if that's what you believe, you're doomed because after you believe, you're gonna sin, guaranteed. You've sinned. If you if you say you're a believer now, you've sinned since you become a believer, guaranteed. So by your own measure, by your own words, you've condemned yourself. And that's a, it's a shame. I mean, if you're just a new Christian or a young Christian, I can understand that. But if you've been at this for a while and you hold strong and fast to that, I just feel terrible for you because somebody lied to you and you believed it. And, uh, you're going to condemn you. You condemn yourself already. All right. Okay. So obviously, uh, in case you don't know, that uh, if you like in John chapter three, I'll point everybody to John chapter three all the time, right? Because, uh, like uh, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus is what got me going in the right direction. It really did. Um, so I encourage you to read cha John chapter three. Jesus says, "Except a man be born of water and of spirit." He cannot enter the kingdom of God. 